Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dude's Kitchen and Grill. I have a question for you in this episode. When it comes to cooking over charcoal, what are your feelings on it? For me, when I first started, I, was, I didn't know what I was doing, I'm gonna be honest with you, but over time I learned how to cook over charcoal, but I had so many questions and no place to really find the answers. Some of my questions were, am I gonna overcook my food? Am I gonna undercook my food? How do I know? If it's too hot, the charcoal's too hot, how do I know, how do I start the thing, right? Because when it comes down to it, the first step is starting your charcoal. That's why I use a chimney. This thing, you just load it full, full of charcoal and light the bottom and your, your charcoal just starts burning. If you're interested in buying one, I have a link below that's for an Amazon affiliate program. You can buy these, most likely be there next day. It's around 25 bucks, but these things are awesome. All right, I'm gonna show you how to cook with charcoal. And, but the first thing we have to do, like I said, light that charcoal. Let's do it. I placed the chimney in the bottom. And now I use char charcoal briquettes. I pour them in. That is perfect. Now I like to fill it about one half to two thirds, maybe even three quarters of the way full. I just like to do it because it allows for more oxygen. I'm gonna take my tumbleweed here, and place it on the bottom like that. Give it a quick light. This will heat up the charcoal inside that chimney so we can start cooking. It is literally that simple. It's time to dump our coals. So I'm just gonna go like that. As you notice, I, I dumped the charcoal into one spot. I didn't go all over. So I'm gonna put this grate over. What's cool about this, I can add more charcoal if I wanted to. Right now, I want this grate to get hot enough so I can clean it. Before we cook, it's very important to make sure that our grill is cleaned off. I am gonna clean up over here as well because I'm gonna show you the indirect method. Now, this is the kind of a cool way of looking at this, indirect versus direct. There's our indirect method right there. This is our direct. Now, obviously, this burger is gonna cook a lot faster. But if this was like a large piece of meat, let's say, uh, I don't know, a pork shoulder or, or a chuck roast or whatever, I would put it over here because I don't want that meat to cook fast. I want it to go slow. But with a hamburger, it's okay to do this. It's been about five minutes, let's check our burgers. Now normally I wouldn't flip it at this point, but I just wanna show you. That actually looks really good. This one, yeah, it's gone nowhere. But I like the look of this one. Let's see if we can get a real cool look to it. Hold on. Let's let that one grill for a little bit longer. We'll give it another five minutes or so and give it a flip. Another five minutes is down. Right on. That's actually looking pretty good. I mean, it looks, that looks great. Great. And I like this. Look at that. Not really getting anywhere, is it? But I like the look of this one, I really do. But you can definitely see the difference between the two zones, right? This indirect, it's gonna take you forever to cook this burger. Here, it cooks up real fast. So this is what we call a sear on this burger. And that helps us hold in the juice as well. Let's give these things uh, about five more minutes. Our five minutes is up. Let's take our temperature. Well, that burger's coming in at about 160. This burger coming in at about uh, 116. Give this one a flip. That one's ready, it's done. Now I'm gonna put it into the cool zone or the indirect heat zone. That's how you cook food on a Weber kettle. You have to watch it or you will burn the heck out of these things. But if you look at that, that is an amazing looking burger and that one's coming along and it's gonna be amazing as well. All right, there you have it. You now know how to cook with charcoal. I only gave you the basics, but 
Get yourself some briquettes. Do not get the Instalites. If you have the chimney, you don't need the Instalite, and the Instalite's just gonna add some funky flavors to the meat that you're grilling or vegetables, whatever. There are things called lump charcoals out there, but they're kind of a different beast. I do have a buddy who owns Jerk Charcoal, J-U-R-K Charcoal, and he's gonna come over to the Dude's Kitchen and Grill, and he's going to show us how to use lump charcoal. Really looking forward to that because I have to admit, I'm not that great at it. There are some other toys and gadgets that separate the amateurs from the pros, and that would be something like this. This is a charcoal holder or basket, whatever you want to call it. You split them, put your charcoals in both sides, split them, indirect cooking down the middle. Put them together, indirect cooking over here. You get the idea, direct cooking here. This is called a vortex, right? So a vortex you put down, you put your charcoal in there and the heat comes up like this. You can do your indirect cooking around the side of the vortex or you can cook right on top. You can also do what I call inverted vortex and that kind of gives you a little bit more displacement of heat like this. And you can cook a little bit faster on that indirect cooking on the sides. I'm gonna show you how to use these two next week. So stay tuned. All right, thank you so much for watching the Dude's Kitchen and Grill, I appreciate it. Go out, use some charcoal, have fun because I'm telling you, when you use charcoal to cook your food, your food's gonna taste so much better. We'll see you next week. Peace, friends.